We'll see. Um, which week college football programs fans would become completely unbearable if they get good? And I've got a few options here, but are yeah. there any that just immediately? I need. I need to know what you mean by good. Define uh, good. If they got uh, like championship competitor, good. And, and how about this? One championship, like conference championship, good. So just win one conference championship. Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all I'm talking about. All right. <laughs> so we, uh, <laughs> the answer, the answer, the answer to this is simply every. So in the state of Mississippi, okay, all right, we have two, we have two power five schools. And one, you and I are innocent bystanders. We've grown up in this state our entire life, okay? And everybody in this state knows one as a rich boy school and one as a very blue-collar school. One right? of those is, is number one on my list, by the way. Yeah. So, I think, hang on, every state has these. Whatever the rich boy school is, that's the answer for every state, and it's not close. So, like, I don't know that Old Miss is going to be different or better than, you know, I'm trying to think of an example because I don't live in any of these states because I only live in the state that I live in. But, like, it's it's just one of those things where if you've got a rich boy school and you've got a blue-collar school, if the rich boy school ever gets good, people are going to hate it. They're just going to hate it. That's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I I think think you're probably right. I was going to put names to it. Um, Yeah, because you just say Ole Miss. But I don't know that Ole Miss is any different than whatever – Ole Miss's equivalency is in some other damn con, you know, state. So, uh, all right, my my second one here is Iowa State because they they have already gotten. Uh, well, they're, but, they're pretty but isn't Iowa State like the equivalency of Ole Miss in the state of Iowa? Wouldn't you say that? Like they're probably the snootier school. Iowa's corn fed. Like they're obviously the blue blood school. Yeah, I guess I guess college. they are, but they've been so bad for so long. Um, I just, yeah, you're probably right. You are probably. Right. I, I think this. Is, I think this is a mentality, and this isn't obviously everybody because I grew up as poor as poor gets in the state of Mississippi. Well, that's not true. I grew up pretty poor in the state of Mississippi, and and I ended up at all this, and you know whatever. Like that. This doesn't broad brush everybody, but you know the stereotype and the stigma for the school. I know plenty of guys that are Ole Miss fans. That one hundred percent went there and did not grow up that way. They didn't live that frat boy lifestyle, um, rich boy lifestyle. But, but we all know what we're talking about when I'm saying that. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. I, I did have Duke on here um, because we well, know how Duke yeah. basketball fans are. Well, yeah. So it's it's this, kind of the same. But this is yeah, this is just this is just rich boy, you know, it's cool. <laughs> I put uh, I put Vanderbilt on here. Um. <laughs> rich boy, school. is there a blue collar school on the list? Uh, I'm sure see. Iowa State fans really hate that they're not blue collar. Iowa State's probably about as blue collar of a rich boy school as you can get. And it might not even be a rich boy school. Is um, I might be wrong about that. All right, so I, I put North Carolina on here. Um, but I like I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's blue collar. What what about South Carolina? No, I don't think South Carolina would be super obnoxious to deal with. You're talking about a school that if they ever got good enough. To beat all I think, of these I think teams you're right. that are a million times bigger than them and better than them and have been at everything. And hang on, one year they made it to the SEC title game. And they weren't, you know, they yeah, weren't they, overbearing or insane. Overbearing. And then, and the next year, they damn sure didn't think that they were going to get back and just all of a sudden think, all right, this is now our lifestyle. So I would disagree with South Carolina. Now I'm super biased here I, because I like South Carolina. Well, yeah, no, I, I like them too. I, I. Wonder because they're the scrappy underdogs and whatnot, but I, they haven't always been the scrappy underdogs. Here, I I wonder, at like, one is South Carolina the the rich boy school in that state as opposed to Clemson? I do not think so. Um, I and I don't and I maybe it's changed. I don't know the demographics, but but I'm I'm going to tell you that one of them is a little engine that could, and the other one is a blue blood juggernaut. So yeah. Yeah, no, you're you're right. Uh, I put down Indiana here, but I don't know where they would fall either. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't consider Indiana fans to be obnoxious or or 
and some of this is going to be media darlings because we know the media is going to like if Mississippi State got really good and the media hates um, uh, uh, Mike Leach, they're not going to become obnoxious because you're not going to see them on TV all the time. You're not going to see all of these uh, announcers talking about them every week because they don't want to promote Mike Leach. Okay, let's. I'm just using this as an example. Not saying this is true, but but let's say because Lincoln, uh, not Lincoln, uh, Lane Kiffin is, has uh, kind of re energized his image and now you know he brings a lot of clicks and he's he's funny and he's likable and and all of these things now media people love him okay if they went they're going to drive so much of this if every time you turn the tv on you see all those sports writers that talk about the sport talking about this school over and over again that's what gets annoying it's not that fan base it's it's the people that drive the conversation in the sports. Like I can, I can hide from Ole Miss fans, but but there's only so many people that talk about the sport that I've got to get my news from that that's are going true. to dictate is this team getting annoying or not? Yeah, that's a for, very for some valid reason. Point. Everybody told me this year that 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 you know the city of Ames was going to be the mecca of football in the Big 12, <laughs> and they were going to compete and win the Big 12, and I thought they were going to struggle to finish four. And I just didn't understand it. I didn't get it. I didn't think Brock Purdy was that good. I thought they would be good. I thought they'd be really competitive in a lot of games, and they were, but I just didn't think they were going to be what people thought they were going to be. A lot of that, a lot of people who cover college football just said that over and over and over again. And yeah. I didn't understand it. I didn't get it. Yeah. That could be where some of the obnoxiousness comes from, not from the fans, but from the but the from the the actual the yeah the national media. Yeah, that's a, I do I do wonder, um, like Miami, if Crystal Ball gets that thing rolling at Miami, I think it oh, could get no, no, really that, annoying. No, that 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 I would say that's going to be the number one answer. By oh the yeah, but but see, I have a hard. Time. I don't see that like. I know everyone keeps saying that Crystal Ball is the second coming. I, I I might be really, really, really wrong. Big, big, big wrong. Just I just got to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you, uh, and that's why. But I put I'm hundred percent agree. Right? If we're we're in agreement. If Miami gets back to being the, God, the U, <laughs> it it'll get obnoxious like six seconds after they're good. Oh yeah. Oh, most certainly. I mean, if they're if they're if they're seven and zero oh in a season, <laughs> and they've still got five games left, it'll it'll be unbearable to get through those five weeks. Oh yes, a, a thousand percent. I mean, it was getting close to it when uh, when Rick had them what number two in the country, um, but it, it was only a short while. Like they, I think they started oh, yeah. out ten and zero. The turnover okay. chain, all that. Yeah. Like it's don't get me wrong, it was it was fun, but it also it it hit a fever pitch very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. Uh, let's see. So you're you talking know, about a rich private school, big money. Okay. Like, you know that th- these are all things that go into it. Like I just can't see, you know, people get. Nobody got sick of Boise when Boise got real good, real like for a while. Oh, like, I don't. That never I don't know got, about that. I don't. Uh, I don't there, there were a lot of people think, that were not exactly thrilled with Boise because Boise was UCF before, uh, before there was UCF really. Yeah, but the only people that got mad at them were people that they were taking either a people that they beat didn't like them, and uh, people that they took attention away from them didn't like them. So, like, only the teams at the top of the food chain uh, are yeah, the guess, big boys that got beat by them. I could, I but could I don't think that. nationally people got sick of them as fans. I think the, the majority of, of other fans loved them. Like You're probably Alabama right about fans that. didn't like didn't like UCF because there were a lot of people that were saying, "Well, UCF." Co-national champions with Alabama, and they didn't want somebody to take their shine away. Like, wait a minute, don't put them in the same conversation with us. And and, and people only did it in tongue in cheek. But the idea that that got under a lot of Bama fans' skin made it fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely worked. It was a good PR move for sure. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.